I'm Justin Harrison, and 11 years ago, uh, my wife and I joined doTERRA, and at that time we had four children, and we've doubled since then, and we now have eight. And you can say we use a lot of oils. Having eight kids is a little bit like organized chaos. Uh, they are always hungry, always. So if they had to choose between oils and food, food wins. <laughs> so John moved in to the neighborhood a couple years ago, and uh, we didn't know him other than we knew they were in doTERRA, and we immediately just hit it off and became workout buddies, and he's, he's my trainer, pushing me, I push him. I'm John Bush, I'm a father Woo! of eight amazing children. I'm married to my best friend, high school sweetheart, Lauren, and our family has been involved with doTERRA since 2012. Hey guys, we're so excited to have you join us today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about reducing the toxic. People ask me all the time, how do we do it? Um, it's basically a party every single day. There are tears, there are smiles. <laughs> so why we need oils. Uh, but the rewards greatly, greatly outweigh any of the challenging times. The most important thing in my life is my family. I have missed holidays and birthdays due to previous careers prior to doTERRA. That time freedom right now, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage master distributor Justin Harrison and Diamond John Bush. Woo! I'm Justin, Woo! and I'm John, Woo! and with our amazing wives, we have a lot of children. Nine. And what that video didn't say is our wives, and by the way, there's only one for each of us. <laughs> our wives, I was trying to figure out how to say that, and there's just no other way to say it. <laughs> our wives are both expecting. Here in a few months, we'll have nine. So I think Emily asked us to do this because we've mastered duplication. Right? So, what's your problem? <laughs> really, she asked us to do this because we are assigned, we're talking about why doTERRA, why now, from not the Corey and Lindley viewpoint, which was amazing, Corey. We want that presentation, like, tomorrow. Um, but from our viewpoint of being in the field, and John has a unique perspective as a financial advisor, and my perspective is a little different from being here from the beginning. And so we're gonna talk about why now. Let's do it. You guys ready? We're ready. All right. We're ready. Let's jump in. Why do Tara? why now? When you think about this question, there's probably a lot of you in the room that could give me some really awesome answers to why doTERRA. We have a leadership team and our owners, those seven that have laid that foundation brick by brick for us to build on. We have the trailblazers right up front here that have carved roads for us to continue to run on. There is a lot of reasons why doTERRA. I would challenge you to think of it this way. Why not doTERRA? Is there a better opportunity that can amplify every critical area of your life like doTERRA? We use it to care for our families, our children. We use it to care for ourselves. We use the same vehicle and opportunity to rewrite our financial future. Is there a better opportunity out there right now than what we have? No. I didn't think so either. When doTERRA found me, um, I was a wounded warrior. A warrior because I was never afraid of hard work. I've been working incredibly hard since I was 13 years old. I learned that from my amazing parents. My mom was always willing to pick up extra work when needed if my dad suffered a layoff. I remember going with my sister uh, when she would clean houses with elderly people. And my dad worked for over 40 years as a factory worker in different capacities. HVAC technician, sheet metal fabricator, boiler maker, mechanic, 
and his hard work was instilled in me at a very early age. I was wounded because I often wondered if there was a better way. If there was a way that I could not take a shortcut, but improve on what my parents had instilled in me in this hard work. I often felt lost. I felt scared, uh, at some point scared for my life. We'll share a little bit more about that in a minute. But I worried a lot of times kind of going in and out of depression that I had lost my ability to dream. I was at this point at an oil refinery um, and after missing 12 hour rotating shift work, if some of you were here, medical personnel and different people, you understand shift work. We're not made to work all the way through the night. It is hard. 4.30 p.m. to 4.30 a.m., it just wears on you. And after doing that for almost six years, I was starting to wonder if there was a better way to spend my time. I was sacrificing what was most important to me. In addition to that, I had been blown up almost three times. The first two were from water, so don't feel too bad for me. The last one was a biggie. If you didn't know, water can absolutely blow up. If you overpressure a vessel enough, then it will explode. I happened to be on the other side of a wall at this point when we were going through some situations in the oil refinery, and there was a vessel that overpressured. Luckily, me being on this side, it overpressured up and not this way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation face to face. Um, that was the second water explosion. This was the third one. This was the biggie. This rocked my world. There was 13 fire trucks that were called to the scene this night. Over 50 firefighters. I don't know how many first responders. There was a 400 pound hydrogen line that ruptured. Found an ignition point. There's open flames underneath of a heater in an oil refinery. And that mushroom cloud found an, igni an ignition point and it exploded. Believe it or not, in a refinery, fire is good. You don't want that cloud to continue to grow because you can imagine what happens, the explosion amplifies. <laughs> the hardest part of this night wasn't the first few hours after the explosion, and it happened a little bit after 10 p.m. because your adrenaline's gone. And we were kind of trained and prepared for that in an emergency situation. In an oil refinery, everything is like an assembly line. When one thing goes off base, Everything else down the line and up the line is completely affected. You know anything else that works kind of like that? It's a lot, a lot like a new terror business, right? So those first few hours, we were out there. My job as an outside operator was to go out and turn these massive valves with wrenches, and your adrenaline is just going like you couldn't imagine. After that calmed down, shortly after midnight, I was grateful those first few hours passed quick, because the hardest part of that night was what happened next. There was a lot of times through that evening that nobody knows about that things got worse and could have gotten potentially much worse. This explosion was on an ethylene unit, one of the last ethylene units in the entire country because all the other ones had done what you see right here. Ethylene is a powerful chemical. It was put right next to an oxide unit. The government used to use these to make EO bombs to drop out of a helicopter or an airplane. They have a seven mile blast radius. I wasn't just worried about my life that night. My parents lived three miles from the oil refinery. The hardest part was placing a phone call to my wife shortly after midnight, praying that she didn't pick up because I knew that I would have to lay my heart on that message. And tell her that I loved her and I loved the kids and to do what she could to raise them the way that we would. But I made a promise to God that night that if he could bring me through and I could see the sunrise that next day and go home to my family, that I would take a different path for my life. And instead of being in a situation where my time was dictated by somebody else, I would look for an opportunity to bring more joy and good to the world. It was, 
it was really interesting to have that perspective as a young 20 year old because outside looking in, and what we do in this room, you guys get it. Outside looking in, the world sees our outer show, right? They see, well, they're successful or the type of car that they drive or the clothes that they wear. We deal with the inside out. We deal with problems a little bit differently. The old timers, when I started at the oil refinery, they told me, you're good. They used to call me youngin. You're good, youngin. You got it made, you're making six figures, you got good benefits, take care of your family, you can work 20, 30 years, and you'll have a great life. Obviously, that was not the case. This gave me a really interesting perspective of legacy in my early 20s. So my gift, and what I wanna share with you today, is that perspective of time. Our intention for what we're sharing is that you can walk away with here with action steps that you can apply today to your business that will help move you forward whether you're stuck or whether you're excited and up, ready to elevate to get to that next level. Does anybody in this room know what their value per hour is? Show of hands, I can see a few. Okay, awesome. For the majority, how would you like to work through that exercise together? Woo! Let's find out what your time is worth. The second gift that I'm gonna leave with you today is the permission to say no, because it didn't dawn on me until years later that there was a series of events that I said no to, and situations that I said no to, that started to define my path. Believe it or not, I turned down an all expense paid trip to Hawaii. Some of you are excited about Hawaii next year, we are too, because I missed this one. An all expense paid trip to Hawaii that I qualified for with my financial company so that we could do Diamond Club. That was a hard decision, but we grew. That was spring, fall of that same year. My wife and I decided, why not? Let's do it again. Diamond Club was so much fun, we're gonna do it again. We went for fall Diamond Club, same year. Yay. If you're clapping, you probably did the same thing. We also knew that that meant most likely because we were living incredibly lean at this point. What I didn't tell you is two years after the explosion, they shut the entire refinery down. I was working there, so was my dad and about 500 of our coworkers. We all lost our jobs on the same day. That was 2012. So we were living pretty lean at this point. Uh, still trying to launch my financial career and working a few other part-time jobs. So we knew that that investment in Fall Diamond Club most likely meant no Christmas for our children. This is where angels come in. This is where the miracles will start to show up in your life. And I promise you, if you continue to do the work in this business, you will have angels show up in your life. Our direct upline, I promised I would not call her out, but I apologize, Julie Haslam, sent us a gift card a few weeks before Christmas, and that is the only reason that Christmas happened that year for our family. We ranked two times, first silver to gold, next gold to platinum. The next difficult decision was that we had to say no to staying in our comfort zone and the family moved 2,000 miles from Delaware all the way to Utah so that we could grow in leadership for our team. That was difficult. But let's make it personal. Let's help you guys figure out what your time is worth. If we look at the average income of gold, $58,500 a year, this is a great one to take a picture of. And no matter your rank, you can plug your income right into the top of this formula and it boils down to an awesome and powerful rate per hour. If you're gonna be a good boss, you give yourself off one week every single year. You just simply divide your annual number by the number of working weeks that you have in a year, 48. We get down to this value per week of $1,218 per week. If we divide that by the average amount of time that it takes to hit gold of 15 hours, we get two. $81 per hour. It allows you and gives you permission, if you did not need it, I now give you permission to start to make decisions that will move you closer to your goals instead of farther away from them. Woo! Is that starting to compute? Because they didn't pay me even half of that much to almost get blown up three times at an oil refinery. It will help you become more accountable to yourself. Lost time is never found again. So doTERRA, obviously, it's given me a safer path to achieve my dreams. Why doTERRA? You guys know why doTERRA. We get health freedom, we get time freedom, we get financial freedom. doTERRA is our vehicle for change. Yes. Turn it over to you.
This is hard. Right? It's hard to no. <laughs> it's hard for men to give up the repose. <laughs> yeah, allergies there for a second. Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, John. So, right? yeah, John. I think we've covered why doTERRA pretty good, right? Is everyone good there? Yeah, we've all got that one covered. So, so I just want to, I want to hit a little bit about why now and why competition matters and what our real competition really is. And this might be a shock to some. Uh, first, competition is a good thing. I mean, we got to have somebody's butt to kick. Woo! Right? Right, boy? Yeah. Yeah. Got to be somebody there. So, but there might be some competition that maybe we don't realize is competition. Um, the first one I think we realize pretty good. <sighs> Oils have become popular. You know, this was in a store we were in last week, snapped some pictures, I think it was $10 for the set. And 100% uh, pure, as you can see, they have on there on the label, I think. And, uh, and then we went to a different store, totally not looking for oils, of course. We went to a craft store. And in this craft store, they had oils. Craft store, essential oils. Now, $6 I want you to just notice the oils in the picture. And let's, we'll, let, we'll just zoom in for you in the back, okay? Frankincense, six ninety nine. dollars That's a good frankincense. Right, for 15 ml of pure, unadulterated oils. Oh, wait, it gets better. Rose. Yeah, six ninety nine. <laughs> 15 ml, Emily, come on. We got to have a better deal. Right, Corey? We got to work on this. $6.99 for pure undiluted rose oil. So our first competitor is the crap oils. Can I say that? I guess I did, sorry. Uh, and we know this is an easy one to overcome, right? Because you get what you pay for, and we know what these really are. So that's number one, okay? The second one is a larger competitor, and we might not realize it. And that's something called the gig economy. And, and you might think, oh, gig economy, you mean like technology, like gigabytes. No, 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 no. Gig economy means side gig. Side gig. And those of us that are over 40 remember the days, uh, the term moonlighting, right? Y'all remember that term, moonlighting? It was viewed poorly by your employer. If you had a second job or a second income, it was frowned upon. You could even be terminated. That was then. Today, in the side gig economy, how is this viewed? Very positively, right? Almost everybody has a thank you Uber, a side hustle. So when you look at this list of people that participate in the gig economy, you might think, oh, those are not our competitors. They don't do essential oils. But are they a competitor? Yes, yes they are. They're competing for time, right? They're taking time. So we are in competition with these guys. So it's important to realize this. This next one. <laughs> Some of us, maybe not so much in this room, but in society, have entertainment paralysis. I saw this was great. <laughs> Have you all heard the term binge watching? It's a real thing. It's where people don't watch an episode of a show, they watch the whole series, or two, or three, right, in one sitting. It's actually one of our competitors, because again, we're competing for time. And this is our biggest competitor, number four. <laughs> Our biggest competitor is ignorance. And ignorance is a lack of knowledge, experience, information, or education. It's the opposite of wisdom. And we heard from Rachel Hollis that ignorance, what? Is a choice, right? Ignorance is a choice. But here's what we might be ignorant of, okay? This, this to me is our biggest competitor in our business. So we're gonna draw a line up here on the screen. And this, is gonna be the wealth continuum, right? This is success. 
And we're gonna draw a line here on the bottom representing poverty. And we're gonna draw a line here in the middle, which is just getting by, the bills are getting paid, you're surviving. And we're going to ask you to come up and draw a line on this screen as to where wealth is or where success is. Most people in our society are going to draw that line way up here. And this is where ignorance comes in. Because that's not where the line is. The line is actually right there. It's just a little bit above getting by. It's just those day-to-day -day consistent, persistent activities. This is what we're ignorant of. This is what society is ignorant of. This is what our team members are ignorant of. That if they'll just do that little bit more, but do it every day, then they're gonna achieve that goal, right? And those are our competitors, guys. And we have them there to kick their butts because ultimately we want to get to freedom. I'm gonna pass it back to John. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Guess where we're going next? <laughs> going upstairs. There was a very smart man by the name of Albert Einstein, and I apologize, I don't have a quote for this slide, but he said that the problems of today will not be solved with the same level of thinking that we were at when we created them. I'll do that one more time. The problems of today will not be solved with the same level of thinking that we were at when we created them. Woo, woo, Let's woo. jump into mindset really quick. How does this look for a recipe for happiness? Will this make a lot of people joyful? So happiness is a goal. doTERRA provides the necessary tools for us to reach that goal. And as all the necessary ingredients, I would ask you what's holding you back. There's a really good chance we already know. If you think that diamond, blue diamond, or presidential diamond would solve so many of your problems right now in this world, raise your hand. Really? I think I just scared you guys with my initial comments. <laughs> I'm thinking I saw some internal hand raises, okay. If you think that throwing more money at your problems or making more money will fix it, it's a fixed mindset. If you are already blue diamond or above, and you were thinking that an abundance mindset means that I increase lifestyle as soon as my income elevates, that is also a fixed mindset. True abundance is this. I have more than enough for myself, and will look for ways to bless those around me. Woo -woo! If we don't elevate from this level of thinking, we're no different than trading time for money. We're no different than that job that we worked incredibly hard to get out of, or if you are still working in that job, to be able to make doTERRA part-time into a full-time, you will have sacrificed that hard work. We've got to shift our mindset. This is very much like saving the money that is left over at the end of the month. How is that going for anybody? <laughs> Not good? No? It's okay. I have a slide on it. Let's talk about it. 69% um, of Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account. That's terrible. It's also incredibly scary. That fear also drives a lot of the decisions or poor decisions that we make about our finances or our business. That's powerful. We can change that. 63% of Americans are more scared of running out of money than they are of dying. We are more scared of living poor than we are of dying. That's a problem. Do we have an opportunity to change that? Yes. Do we have a solution? Yes. 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 Absolutely. I love hearing these yeses down front. Do we have a responsibility in the world to help those people who need it? Yes. 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 I'm hoping I hear more and more. Yes. Because money is not going to fix this problem. Guess what is? You will, we will, absolutely. Does this get people excited? <laughs> this is my next gift to you. We're gonna learn how to build a million dollar business. Once you have reached the amazing rank of gold, there is a fun financial formula that if you are developing and growing an asset like my dad was when he worked for 40 years so that he could retire and have that asset give him a steady paycheck as if he was still working every single month.
there's a way that we kind of reverse calculate that. So we're in the residual income business. So we simply divide the annual income by 0 0.05. So if you take the average income of a gold and divide it by 0 0.05, $58,500, you get just under 1.17-ish, I think it is, a million dollars. How many golds do we have in this room? I think you guys can be louder. How many golds do we have? That's better. That's better. Are you operating? Are we operating like a million dollar business owner? When you step into a meeting and you step into a situation, I hope that if you're not, this will give you something to think about. There is an amazing presentation. If you guys want more on that, Dave Ellis did a phenomenal presentation a few years ago at Leadership. That was when, that presentation was when my wife's doTERRA business became our doTERRA business. I watched that. I was, let's go. Let's just take this journey together. So it's out there. The power of residual income. Look that up. And if you have a doubting husband, I would suggest he watch that. This is also what is incredibly powerful and what will get us to a point and accelerate everything that you want in life. What took my dad it was 42 years of his working career to accomplish. I had the pleasure of helping him and my mom both retire this past summer. He retired at the young age of 62. Worked his entire life. His body is already starting to break down, but we have a solution for that, right? He's taking his LLB. He does his Terra Greens faithfully. He is awesome. Probably even better than me sometimes. He is really good. But what took him 42 years, my wife and I have accomplished with our eight crazy kids in just under four years. That's powerful. To the point that now I can turn to my dad and in retirement, his level of happiness is dictated by what? That paycheck that he gets every single month because it has a ceiling on it. And I can turn to him and say, Dad, don't worry about it. We're gonna handle this vacation. We've got this trip. You go and you take mom out to dinner. You go have an overnight somewhere. <laughs> that feels good. Woo! Because it's not about us and how amazing we are. We're looking for ways to give back. If you are feeling a little bit stuck right now, let me give you a few questions to ask yourself because we need to start. Sometimes we just need to start where we are and forget where we've been and just kind of move forward. If you're not saving at least 10% of what you're making right now, work towards that. Let that be goal number one. If you don't have at least two months of your doTERRA paycheck in a savings account, goal number two. And number three, this is the fun one. We've got a few more slides on this one. If you are not currently reinvesting into your business and the people who need you that are current customers and showing them a path to follow, please let that be goal number three. Let's talk more about that next one. Warren Buffett was asked this powerful question. When is the best time to buy stock? Right? This great financial guru. And this was his answer. Over time. And Justin just talked about it a little bit. How do we get where we want to go? Consistency. Repetition. Over time. So if we apply that to our businesses and put the financial cap on, and we're buying stock into our own businesses, what does that mean? We in this business are first generation wealth creators. What that means is there are a lot of us in this room that have made maybe five, maybe six, seven figures for the first time in their family's life. That is amazing, that deserves some applause. The way that we shift, the way that we shift income and turn it into wealth is by operating in these principles. Let's look at the recipe here. Thank you to Rod Richardson who graciously shared this with me so that I could share it with you. He um, shared this at Leadership last year and it was on my mind for almost 12 months. I was like, I gotta get a hold of that slide. I need that slide, I need that. It was so powerful. I've chatted with a lot of top leaders and they found this to be incredibly accurate. So if you were looking for a recipe in your business as far as how to buy more stock in your business and how to reinvest, look at this. Fast starts going towards tools and samples. Power of three, as that continues to grow, your travel budget. The bonus pools, eliminating debt, being free to give, saving, training events, and then additional travel. 
your team is going to expand. The unit level is yours. That becomes your base salary. Don't think that we're cutting you short. You guys have reviewed the build guide, right? You saw the biggest section in the build guide. It's the unit level. It just takes time. Some of you are in here thinking that I barely have enough to get by right now, and that's okay. But again, we're back to the fixed mindset. Please do not be the dam in the river. You are wanting everything to come to you and stop. That is not gonna get us closer to where we wanna go. <laughs> Elevate and expand your vision. What other people take 40 plus years to accomplish, we can do in four or less. We've got some amazing examples in the front. Come and talk to them and how quick they did it. Do not be the dam in the river, be the dam river. <laughs> Don't be the dam in the river. Let it flow and bless other people. Give back and reinvest in your business. <laughs> So can we change from why doTERRA, why now, to why you? Yeah. Yes. yes. Because why you is really everything. And a lot of us struggle with uh, money blocks. Yes. Um, I don't know if any of you had the same parents I did, but I grew up hearing, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We don't have money for that. How many of you grew up with those parents? Okay, wow. Look, most of us. Preach. Right? Or money doesn't grow on trees. Yes. Have you heard that one? Yeah. Yes. And I wish I could go back in time and tell myself, ask mom where it does grow. <laughs> right? See what she says. <laughs> so we can't do that, right? But a lot of us have those same money blocks and money issues. And um, the best single one sentence description to destroy money blocks I heard just a few weeks ago from Burke Rigby. Burke, where are you? Okay. He's here. I know he's here somewhere. And uh, Burke, I'm totally stealing this from you. This will be the one time I give you credit. Uh, <laughs> and, and that is that you cannot feed the hungry from empty shelves. Yes. Yes. Money blocks, gone. Right? You cannot feed the hungry from empty shelves. So remove those. And this is why you, this is why we need you. What would happen? What will happen when we empower hundreds of thousands of people to be financially free and that same group of hundreds of thousands of people have also abandoned this crazy, insane cycle of blame that's engulfing our nations. When we abandon that, because my friends, when you blame someone, You've never truly failed until you blame someone else. And I don't know about you, but we're tired of the blame. I, as a leader, am responsible. Right? So when we take those few hundred thousand people that are financially secure and they have freed themselves from the blame game, imagine what's gonna happen. Imagine the change that can happen in our world. Imagine what happens when we go home to our teams tomorrow and we start to dig. So let me ask you this question. If you went into your backyard, this is your backyard, and there was four bars of silver and a diamond. <laughs> four bars of silver and a diamond in your backyard. Would you dig until you found them? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. So we have to do the work. Our work ethic pays our check. Now you can dig with a shovel, or you can upgrade. <laughs> if you work the numbers, if you coordinate with your team, embrace empowered success, the numbers don't fail you. Okay, the numbers do not fail you. Your success is for sure if you talk to enough people. Are you willing? Yeah. No. Are you? Because yeah. here's, here's, here's the thing. 
your team won't do it if you don't do it. Right? We got to do it. We have to decide which part of this statement is true. Click. One day or day one? You decide. Today's day one. Today's day one. Ultimately, go back. Pictures. <laughs> Got it? Good. <laughs> no? Sorry, I gave you your back. <laughs> this statement changed my life. Our privileges are not for our pleasure. Wow. Our privileges are for our purpose. Yeah. Embrace our purpose, my friends. We love you. Woo! God bless you. My name is Kim Hilton.